natin sa mga pinanaroon. And welcome po sa oras ng panalangin. And I will be uh, with you this, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, this morning, wherever you are. Um, my name is Brother Billy. Ako pong makakasama ninyo ngayon. And uh, I just like to thank uh, Sarah Balabagan International Ministries, International Missions for inviting me uh, to this program and also PHLB Radio as well. Maraming salamat po sa inyong panyayo. So, um, uh, today po, we, I just want to talk to you about the, you know, um, prayer. Since ito po ay oras ng panalangin, it's but good to uh, to talk about prayer because it's a very important aspect of a Christian life. And so, uh, I want to go ahead and um, talk and discuss about righteousness, our righteousness. It's our identity. And so um, I believe that uh, righteousness or every believer should have a revelation of who he is or who she is. Righteous, righteousness. And um, because, you know, uh, I really believe that this truth and message of righteousness will liberate us or will make us free from condemnation, guilt, shame from coming to the Father. You might say, uh, what does this have to do with, with prayer? And I would say everything. Because once we have a revelation of who we are in Christ, that we are righteous and that God loves us and he accepts us for who we are, um, especially if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. You know, um, this is very important uh, in the aspect of prayer because this will make us bold in prayer, that we can approach the Father boldly in prayer. Right? And this, this message will really empower us and uh, will change the way we pray and the way we view God, we view ourselves. So it's important for now we know and we learn about who we really are in Christ, that we are the righteous ones. And let me say this um, as well, when it comes to righteousness, because I really believe that the birthing place of all religions of the world is man's quest for righteousness. What does that mean? What, what, what every man has in his heart, in his deepest desire, what he really wants, if you were going to investigate it, really, man's deepest desire is to be right with God. Hindi po ba? Tama po ba? That man really wants to be right with God. In other words, am I right with God? Is God okay with me? Or is God mad at me? You know, meron siyang, uh, there is a, there is no um, distinct um, definition or something that's in man that will say, I am good with God, or God is good with me. You know, he is, we're okay in the relationship. So that's the reason why I want to share this in line with prayer, because it's very important. And I wrote this down. When a person doesn't have a revelation of righteousness, who he is in Christ, this mentality, the mentality of mentality that says, you know, will God accept me? Is God okay? Is God, is God mad at me? You know, that kind of mentality will hinder him from praying boldly to God. Even if, even if he's a Christian, even if you're a Christian, if you don't have a revelation of rights and you're still guilty or there's a sense of condemnation in you, that, the, that will not help you in your prayer life. You will approach the Father like, uh, you know, like, Somebody that doesn't have confidence. And ayaw po natin yun. That's what we don't like. We want to be bold. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, therefore come boldly. Bold means apat. Confident. To the throne of grace. We come before our Father and say, Father, hey, I'm here. And I need your help. That kind of confidence is what God wants us to have when it comes to prayer. So, with that said, let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53. And by the way, during this time, um, we will be looking at several scriptures. 
I will be giving you several scriptures for us to see what the Bible has to say about us and our righteousness in God. Very important. So let's begin in Isaiah chapter 53. If you have your Bibles with you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Let me just uh, pause and acknowledge for a while uh, that the Father God in this time together. Father, I thank you that your word is true and your word is anointed. Father, I pray for every person listening or watching this, this program, radio broadcast. I pray that they would uh, be enlightened with the word of truth, with your word. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. So let this light, Lord, be upon all of us. Shine your light in every person's heart that we may know the truth and the truth will set us free. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read Isaiah chapter 53, verse 17. Verse 17, it says here, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is God speaking, okay? And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. And then here's the point I want to make. It says here, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So I want to go ahead and talk about righteousness. So what is righteousness? Yeah, very important. What is righteousness? If righteousness is what will make me bold in my prayers, then what is righteousness? All right. So righteousness simply means right standing with God. It means you have a right to stand, right standing with the Father. It's, it's, uh, it means that your relationship with God is good, is okay. The opposite of it is, for example, if, if I are in a relationship, or maybe, I don't know, a friend or kamag-anak na nagkatampuhan or whatever, you know, um, I'll use my own example, my life, okay? Um, you know, before I married my wife, I was courting her. Um, you know, my, her, her dad, I would say, I, am, I was not right with his dad. He, 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 I'll just be honest, he doesn't like me. He is opposed to her marrying me. So in that sense, I am not right with him. Every time I see him and he sees me, there is something within our relationship that is not right. There's something wrong. Therefore, because of that, I was not confident and bold to step up to him and talk with him. Because I was not right with him. There is something wrong with our relationship. Now, that's the opposite of righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God, meaning God is not mad at you. He, you are okay. We are okay with God. We can come to God anytime, boldly. I, and here's a, a good, a perfect definition of righteousness. It says here, righteousness is having the ability, listen carefully, having the ability to stand in the presence of God without a sense of guilt, shame, or condemnation, as if sin never existed. Mm, think about that. I know medyo, baka medyo mabigat ito for some. But really, this is what we have become when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. If you're a Christian, I will read to you a scripture later on. The Bible says you have been made righteous because of your faith. Our faith in Christ Jesus, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins, all sins, past, present, future. He cleansed us from all sins. And therefore, because there is no sin issue anymore, God has already dealt it through Jesus Christ. Therefore, we can stand before God. Hallelujah. Boldly, with no sense of guilt, shame, or condemnation, as if sin never existed. In other words, we have peace with God. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? That's why the good news is good news 
In other words, we are approved of God. God welcomes us, just like the, the prodigal son, the father of the prodigal son, right? He welcomed his son dearly into his heart, into his arms once again. That's how God sees us in Christ. In other words, righteousness is a state of being. It's the, it's the state of us with God, our a state of being, being right with God. Righteousness is not a conduct. Indisha, good works or conduct that, you know, it's not a behavior like you behave right. No, it's not, it's not that. Remember, uh, it, you know, for some of you, maybe you know the story when Adam and Eve sinned, right? The sin entered their hearts and then, um, you know, their relationship with God was not right anymore. So, um, in other words, they, be, they, they became unrighteous on the inside, their nature, instead of they can communicate directly with God. And we're talking about prayer, right? right? They can communicate with God, talk with God in the pool of the day. The Bible says now because of sin, they, they, they felt guilty about that. They were afraid. Actually, Adam said when God walked in the garden and said, Adam, where are you? Then he hid. The Bible says he hid himself. And then he said, the Bible says, Adam said, I, I was afraid. That's why I hid you. I, I hid from you. And so, guys, that's the perfect example of a person who has a guilt and shame in his heart. He was afraid of God because he sinned. So if we're talking about prayer right now and you have that in you, it, you don't have very much confidence to come before God. Am I right? Isn't that true? Right? Because there is a sense of guilt and shame. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's okay to sin and it's okay when you sin. You know, you still, no, we'll talk about that in a while. But what I'm saying is that sense of guilt and shame that's lingering on the inside. You know, God wants that removed. Especially if you are born again and you are in Christ. God has already dealt with that sin issue through Jesus Christ and his blood. The Bible says his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He cleanses us from all sin. And therefore, if you have this sense of guilt, you come before the Lord, ask him to forgive you of all your sins. The Bible says, and he is faithful and just to cleanse us, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, cleanse, release and cleanse us from all unrighteousness first john 1 9 says all unrighteousness why because god wants us to come before him without any guilt or shame he wants us to come before him as our as a son comes to his father and say father god hey hallelujah how are you good morning god you know glory thank you lord thank you for saving me you know thank you for providing for me hey god thank you and you know what by the way I have a problem here and I need some wisdom, Father. Help me. Can you see the boldness in prayer? Versus, you know, Lord. You know, there's, there's kind of tone. There's a, there's a weakness in the tone of, of that kind of prayer. And God wants that to move. He doesn't move. And so let me proceed and encourage you some more. So righteousness is not a conduct. It's not perfect behavior. No. It's not helping because I help a, a, an old woman cross the street so, so I'm more righteous than others. No, no, no. Righteousness is what you have become. It is your nature. It's what you have been made because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. It's what we have been made in Christ. In other words, sa Tagalog, kung nake Kristo ka, and you are in Christ, na naniniwala ka kay Kristo, may pananampalataya ka kay Kristo, matuwid ka sa paningin ng Panginoon. Ulitin ko po, kung na kay Kristo ka, ang pananampalataya mo ay na kay Heso Kristo. I will say this, matuwid ka sa paningin ng Panginoon. In God's eyes, you are righteous. Hallelujah. Scripture, I'm glad you asked. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says here, For he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, what? To be sin for us, that we might become 
the righteousness of God in him. Mm. Glory to God. Sa Tagalog, gusto niyo po basahin ko po in the translation. Tagalog translation, magandang balita, Biblia, 2 Corinthians 5.21, ang sabi dito, hindi nagkasala si Kristo. Ngunit, alang-alang sa atin, siya'y itinuring na makasalanan. Upang, bakit? Upang sa pakikipag-isa natin sa Kanya. Nakipag-isa ka na ba kay Kristo? Itong sinabi, upang sa pakikipag-isa natin sa Kanya ay maging matuwid tayo sa harap ng Diyos. So mga kapatid, hindi po dahil nakagawa ako ng kabaitan sa kapwa, although that is good and we should do good and we should be nice to people, we should love people, pero hindi po yun ang batayan ng Diyos para sa katuwiran natin. For us to be righteous with God, you know, our conduct, our behavior, us being nice is not the basis of God for us to be righteous. No one can attain to the righteousness of God through good works. None. The Bible is very clear about that. If Just because you are kind doesn't mean God's righteousness is in you. No. The Bible is very clear. Dahil sa pakikitong isa natin kay Kristo, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, doon tayo nagiging matuwid. Because guys, no amount of good works can make us righteous. None. I don't care if you do, did a hundred things good today. Tomorrow, pag nagkasala ka, you are disqualified. It doesn't make us righteous because of our good works. It's through faith. Righteousness is a gift from God. Because I can tell you, Jesus said, unless, and this is what, this is what he said, unless you attain to the righteousness of the Pharisees, You can, right? And nobody can attain to the righteousness of the Pharisees because to the dot, they followed the law. But yet, they never attain to the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is a gift. I'll read that to you here in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. And sabi dito, for if by the one man's offense, talking about Adam, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life in life through the one Jesus Christ the gift of righteousness righteousness is a gift from God kaya yung binasa natin kanina sa Isaiah chapter 53 ang sabi dito this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me says the Lord it doesn't come from you or your good works. No, it's from me, says the Lord. It is a gift that we receive when we receive and we put our faith in Jesus Christ. So if you are born again, I really want to encourage you, be bold in your prayer. God sees you right. God loves you. He accepts you for who you are. Now, let me be clear and qualify that. That doesn't mean God loves everything, every foolish thing we do. Of course, no. He doesn't wink an eye when we do something bad. No, because sin is sin. And sin has a payment. That's why there is 1 John 1, 9, because I, I wrote it here. What if I sin, Brother Billy? Okay, I'm righteous. Okay, okay, I'm righteous. I'm right with God. I don't, what if I sin? Of course, you know, in our lifetime, it's impossible na hindi tayo magkakasala. Of course, we, we are going to commit sin. That's just the reality. That's just a fact. So what shall we do then if If I am righteous and I sin, what shall I do then? There's a remedy for that in 1 John 1.9. I, I quoted that to you a while ago, but let me read it. In 1 John 1.9, it says, if we confess our sins, we confess our sins. And you know why we confess our sins? For our own conscience sake. How many of you know if you sin, wala kang boldness to come before God and, and pray a prayer and receive from the Lord when you know you've done something wrong? <laughs> Am I right? Diba? That is true. When you know you've done something wrong, you know, whatever that is, alam mo na nagkasala ka and, and you know in your heart you've sinned. And when that happens, you know, God doesn't want you to run from Him. God wants you to run to Him. Lapit ka kagad kay Lord. Run kagad kay Lord and say, Lord, hey, whoa, 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 I messed up. This is, I mean, I'm, I was stupid to do that. I was stupid to say that. To whoever, I mean, to, or to my, I was stupid, Lord. Lord, forgive me. And that's what the Bible encourages us. Confess our sins. 
he is faithful. That's what the scripture says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. Everybody say faithful. So God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And it says here, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse us. Why? He doesn't want you and I to be guilty. He doesn't want you and I to feel condemned. Ah, and say, Lord, he doesn't want that. He wants us to come boldly. Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Amplified, Modern Amplified says this, therefore let us, this is Hebrews 4, 16, I'm, I'm reading. Therefore let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is the throne of God's gracious favor. Notice this, with confidence. Woo, hallelujah. Glory. And without fear. Woo, glory to God. How many of you like that? How many want to approach God, the throne of grace, right? This is prayer, guys. When we are approaching God and we are approaching the throne of grace, that's prayer. Right? And he wants us to approach and have it. He said, God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear. That's the Bible, my friends. That's the word of God. Confidence. Everybody say confidence. Without fear. Yun po ang gusto ni Lord. That's what he wants us to do and to be when we approach him in prayer. Kaya po mga kapatid, mahalaga, really, it's very important that we have a revelation of righteousness and who we are in Christ. Because I am in Christ, the blood of Jesus has cleanses, cleansed me from all sin. Therefore, I come boldly before God, my Father who loves me, and who, by the way, is the one who made me righteous, not me. That's why, that's why the righteousness, you know, we receive that. And we say, Lord, I thank you. I receive that I am righteous in Christ. And therefore, from that place of revelation, from that place of confidence, from that, that place of having no fear, we come before God and we do our prayers. Woo! Isn't that cool? Versus coming. No, I'm now let me qualify that. I'm not saying if you're afraid, don't come to God. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying. That, um, you know, if you're sad or you have a problem, you don't, and then you come to God. I'm not saying you cannot do that. Of course, he's our father. God delights in mercy. He loves us. He will reach us. He will stoop down and he will bring us up from where we are. That's God's love. Wherever we are, he will reach us out because he loves us. But that is not God's best. God's best is that you come to me. Just like tayo pag pumunsita tayo sa, sa, sa bahay ng ating mga magulang, di ba? We don't come and say, Dad, Tay, meron ba kayong biskwit dyan, Tay? Nagugutom kasi ako eh. No, we don't do that. We are confident and say, Hey, Dad, oh, kumusta? Kumusta? Oh, yeah, ano siya? Uy, kung pagkain dito, bukas ka kagad ng rep, di ba? You want to get things, food in the refrigerator. Why? You're confident. Why? Because you are right with your, with your parents. You have a right relationship. And that's the same thing God wants us to be, our attitude God wants us to have when it comes to him. Let's come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, right? Lord, I need help here. Help me, Lord. Right? I need wisdom. Your word says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And so I'm here. I ask of you who gives to me without reproach and liberally. Hallelujah. That, my friend, is my exhortation to all of us today. And let me leave you with this in closing. Ooh, hallelujah. The Bible says in Proverbs 28.1 that the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous. Remember who's the righteous? That's you and me, if you are in Christ. The righteous are bold as a lion. Okay? And here, scriptures that I want to leave with you, you can search it and look at it in your own uh, personal time. As righteous ones, this is what we expect when we pray. Proverbs 15, 9, first scripture I want to share. It says here, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. That's us. He hears our prayer. Glory to God. And here's the last scripture. 
James 5, 1, 6, James 5, 16. In the Amplified Classic, it says here, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man, that's us, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. That's who we are, and that's what we have, and that's what we have in him. Our prayers are powerful. The prayers of a righteous man are powerful. So let's not be timid in our prayers. Let's come to God boldly. Let's make a request boldly. That's my exhortation. Let's be strong in who we are in Christ. We are righteous in him, right? Let's make bold requests in prayer. Let's come to him and say, Father, thank you. And let's be bold with what we have in him. One of my requests not we come to him with boldness because we are rich. God loves us. God loves you. He is for you. He is not against you. And yes, you might have commit mistakes and sin. Who doesn't? But you know, God is God. He is love. He loves us. Let's just come to him and say, Lord God, I messed up. I did this. Again, I read that to you. Confess our sins so that God can cleanse us, forgive us, and then make a request. Hallelujah. Amen, Puba. So this is good news to me. And I hope this is also good news to you. I pray that you were blessed with this. That's my encouragement. I leave that to you. Search the scriptures. Study your Bible. Uh, pray to God. Be bold, sons and daughters of God. And if you are, by the way, if you are not yet uh, a son of God and you feel like, you know, I don't know if, if God, you know, you're not sure that you're right with God, we can, we can fix that. So, sa pamamagitan and through this prayer, I would like you, I would like to invite you to um, open up your heart to make sure, if you want to make sure that Jesus is your Lord and that you be right with God, the Bible says no one comes to the Father except through him, through Jesus Christ. So I want to, I want to make sure that every one of you listening here or watching this program has received Jesus Christ as their own personal Lord and Savior. Because the righteousness of God is through him. It's through Jesus Christ. Nobody else. No one else. No one comes to the Father, Jesus said, except through me, he said. So if you are ready, why don't you close your eyes, lift up your hands, and say this prayer with me to receive Jesus. Say this, Father God, I realize that I have committed sin. I sin against you. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, right now, with all of my heart, I receive you as my personal Lord and say, forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive you into my heart right now. Thank you. Thank you for being my Lord. Yes. And I will be with you forever. Help me walk out this Christian life. Hold me by the hand. And help me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You can say that in your mouth, with your mouth, in your heart. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. So that's it for for today. Maraming salamat po for uh, allowing me again to share the word of God in this broadcast, in this program. Maraming salamat po ulit uh, sa Sara Palabagan International Ministry at sa PHNLP. Thank you. God bless you.